community's connection to the water continues on the Jones River in Kingston, Massachusetts, home to the Jones River Environmental Heritage Center at the historic Jones River Landing. Occupying some of the same buildings where the first wooden Mackenzie bass boats and chivalric sailing vessels were built in the early to mid 20th century, the center educates the public through its boat restoration and building projects, while also working to protect and enhance the ecosystem of the Jones River itself through grassroots environmental work. On a recent visit to the center, I had a chance to speak with Director Pine Dubois about the organization's goals. There, there's really a dual purpose to our effort. The, the parent organization, Jones River Watershed Association, is dedicated to repairing uh, uh, the health of the Jones River and getting the ecosystem um, intact, really, and, and reestablishing the connection between these great, the Great Glacial Lake, Silver Lake, and Cape Cod Bay, and restoring the fisheries. So we're about taking down dams, mm -hmm. but we're also about public stewardship of the river. And so what we do at the landing is invite people to be members, $50 a year. Mm -hmm. You can come, you can, you can park here, you can put your canoe and kayak in here, participate in all of our programs. We have you know, regular potlucks every Friday night during the summer. We mm -hmm. have volunteer nights every Wednesday night. You see that they're repairing one of the old right. Shivrick, um, uh, uh, uh sailboats. Um, we're working with neighborhood organizations also that are hist have a historic bent. Uh, we're right now trying to get funding through the Community Preservation Act in town to establish an educational program around restoring one of the Shivrick cat boats. Mm -hmm. um, and work with the high school and that sort of thing. So uh, right now today, uh, we have a bunch of kids from the grammar school coming, right. um, the local Montessori school that are learning how to build um, a shellback dinghy. Mm -hmm. Last year they were here, here building a couple of prams. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to do um, the kinds of things to keep that maritime tradition alive that is so rich in the Jones River. Um, keep people connected to the water in a way that helps them care for it. Sure. And so our mission really is long-term stewardship, preservation of the history and the culture that we believe makes us a strong mm -hmm. community. That's great. Well, that, that's terrific, Pine. Um, why don't we take a look uh, around the rest sure. of the, their shop. You can show us some of the other neat historical parts of the building and also we'll take a look at some of those boats that you're talking about. Great, we can do that. Excellent. Um, if we okay, so this room uh, we use for a variety of purposes. We work here all week long. We might have our have nothing but computers out um, and the phones going. Uh, more computers than phones, I might say. We are on the web, jonesriver.org, if anybody's interested. But we'll have um, seminars here uh, of the Mass Bay Maritime Artisans. So we'll bring in people to talk about restoring ships or drowned ships or recovering ships or how to build ships. Um, um, or we might have uh, vernal pools and ecology talks and, and that sort of thing. This and is the, um, where the class will take place for the uh, Montessori school. Um, we had to restore it. We lifted it up and raised it so that um, we could bring it back into some, some functioning. But it was built in 1895 by George Shiverick and has been used for boat building ever since. Um, Here we have and, we're um, a Shiverick Duxbury duck that is um, being repaired by volunteers every Wednesday night, and that's under the um, guidance of Reuben, of um, uh, Peter Aronstam, who is captain of the Mayflower. Reuben Smith started the project a number of years ago. He was our first boat shop director and was really uh, to be credited for teaching us about the history of the place. Okay, so come on into the refrigerator. <laughs> Obviously, we use the sailcloth just to cut down on the heat loss. Maybe you saw inside uh, the double barrel wood stove. That was a stove that was here um, during the time of Myron Lindy, who followed George Shiverick here. So we're talking the 1940s. Uh, and uh, one of our members uh, happened to get it at a yard sale and decided that it belonged here, just like the, the pot belly, the railway pot belly stove in the, in the main room there. This room is a, an adjunct. We removed the sailcloth and the uh, refrigerator garment um, and, and open it up. Uh, we'll do that on uh, Saturday night when we convert this into party space. But in the meantime, we have benches and planers and drill presses and the bathrooms that are on sewer and our, um, and our tool shed. 
for um, the tools that have been donated by, Ma by the Mass Charitable Mechanics Association. This is an extension of this building. Uh, the building was actually, again, put up by, um, by Mike McKenzie when they first came. Uh, it is an old uh, sawmill building that was taken down. I, I'm not sure where from, but um, they put it up in 1951, probably. And uh, as I said, this was the first site of the McKenzie Bass Boat. So they built bass boats throughout the, bu throughout the buildings here. We're again, we're going to use this. Um, so we're all about local stoves here. Uh, it, it, it just it's on right now, but originally they took a, they took a piece of iron pipe and uh, fabricated that stove. I'm not sure when, but I'll bet it was. Uh, you know, so unfortunately seven. you caught us at a bad time when we're uh, shoveling things around and haven't gone to the transfer station yet, but we've got boats on the floor on, on wheelies and boats in the ceiling uh, that, that need to be uh, painted. Um, and we have a boat over here in the corner that is being protected from the uh, rain on the roof uh, coming in. This building um, we haven't had a chance to restore yet. and. Truthfully, uh, we're thinking that it might be a wiser thing to replace. <laughs> After my tour of the center, I got a chance to watch a youth boat building session conducted by Jack Pitney, who was teaching some students from the local Montessori school how to build the shellback dinghy. We've got a cap iron, a cutting iron, and a chip breaker. My brother and yesterday we glued on the bottom board. If you come and look at it, you'll notice that I glued it to the midships frame. We're stubbling yeah, these edges nice. into feather edges. I want you to write um, down on your foot line. And we're trying to make it so that when you place a piece of wood along here, it's going to lay flat against here as well as the top. Um, this is where the, I think it's called, dagger board. The dagger, board. dagger, dagger board goes in. No. Yeah, the, the dagger, dagger board. board trunk. Yeah, which is what the dagger board goes in. So when we cut these out, we're going to put them side by side. Ugh. We're going to put them side by side and we're going to have like other pieces of wood in between those. So it, you can pull the dagger board up and down for when you're sailing and when yeah, you're... Because the boat we built last year, yeah. uh, over the summer we sailed it and it didn't sink. That's a good thing. People capsized it, but it did not sink. Even though the kids in this class might not become shipwrights or naval architects, they were learning new skills and forming connections with the area's boating history something the Jones River Heritage Center offers to anyone interested in stopping by. Learn more by visiting www.jonesriver.org. I'm Tom Richardson for Boating Local. Thanks for watching. And the sides, and then we can start cutting them up and constructing them.